So on ISP3, show IP interface brief. The router has its serial interfaces shut down. So interface serial 010. The IP address here is 8811.1 slash 24 mask. Encapsulation is going to be PPP and we're going to enable an authentication protocol of CHAP. Now what you need to do, and I'm gonna do this before I no shut the interface, is configure the username of the remote side. That's by default based on the router name. So we need to know what this router's host name is configured as. In this example, the router needs to be turned on. So I'll turn it on. It's now booting up. And as soon as that router boots up, we'll be able to configure ISP3 with the username of the remote side. The router is booted up. We can see it's configured with a host name of C2. So on this side, the ISP side, I'm gonna use the command username hostname of the router C2, password, Cisco. We're told to use a password of Cisco. You could also use a secret password if you wanted to, but in this example, I'm simply going to use password. I'm then going to go back onto the interface and no shut the interface. So the interface has come up. You can see over here. On the other side, we see that the interface has come up. But again, show interface serial 010 shows us that even though layer 1 is up, layer 2 is down, and that's because this side needs to be configured with PPP. It's still running HDLC. So we need to configure both sides to use the same encapsulation. So on customer two, interface serial 010, IP address 8811.2 slash 24 mask. Encapsulation PPP, PPP authentication is gonna be CHAP. We still need to configure the username of the remote side. So the username is going to be ISP3. So username ISP3 password is Cisco. Notice now that the link has come up because CHAP authentication has passed. Now I often get questions about the order of commands. In some cases, the order that you type at commands is important. So in a lot of examples, they will show you the username being configured first and then the interface being configured. But just be aware that as I've demonstrated here, that's not necessarily required. In certain situations, you have to type commands in a specific order, but that's not true in this example. Once I had correctly configured everything, the router's negotiated and the link came up. So show interface serial 010. Notice a line protocol is up, physical interface is up, LCPs and NCPs have successfully been negotiated. On this side, we should see something similar. Interface is up, up. LCPs and NCPs have been negotiated. So can C2 ping the ISP router with this IP address? Yes, it can. So again, interface looks good. Everything has been successfully negotiated. 
We could also do a debug. So let's run debug PPP authentication on this side. And what I'll do on the ISP side is shut the interface down and then no shut it. So we can see the PPP negotiation. Now, some of the output is shown in Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is not showing you everything that you would see on a real router. Have a look at my GNS3 YouTube videos if you want to see a full example of PPP debugging, specifically with PPP CHAP. So I'll turn off debugging here. Packet Tracer is not really showing us what we would see in a live environment. But show run again. That's the configuration of PPP CHAP. Notice a clock rate has been configured here. That's because one side of the connection is the DCE and one side is the DTE. This is the DTE cable. This is the DCE cable. The DCE cable provides the clocking for the link. So we've successfully configured PPP on the link between C1 and ISP1 and PPP chap between C2 and ISP3. Now we need to configure default routes and confirm that the customer routers can ping the Google DNS server as well as Cisco.com.